working so hard. You want me to ask it, me to ask it, me to ask it. So, campus relationship should be an open one. Eh? You have a team, right? Yes. Because when jealousy sets in, baby, you are dead. You are dead. Because you'll be with Adwa. Maybe you're only asking him or her to explain something. And because the other guy has assumed a husband, and the other lady also pushes there, why? Oh, who am I? You won't be doing that now. Tell me, let me press out. We are here. The ultimate is for us to come and learn. And I'm a boy. So please, you don't assume the role in campus relationship as a husband or a wife. And at times, you can go to a step, I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness. We move into the sense that the person you are all students, you are here to learn, to make your grades, to become the bank managers, the lawyers, the teachers, you just name it. So you are not somebody's mother here, and you are not somebody's father here. Yet we spent basically at a point in time that we need money to go and be photocopies. So they, they start looking out to go and do presentation out there to come in here. You want me to say all of us should be all for what? We are all adults. I respect everybody. Your fault should be on silent. Hmm? When I was in school, I didn't get that opportunity. But I can't go my parents were good. They grew me well. And I listened to them. That is why today I have the opportunity. You also have the opportunity to meet face to face. What I'm saying, you know. But sometimes it gets into your head so much so that you forget about everything. You don't open your eyes to see the mind that got to stages. Relationship be a or be a person be a bit. Jolly now, and what's up with your jolly? Nobody's telling now, her whether the person has a good 
character, the person is truthful, or you have one eye, or let that regard. When you see a different call, you have a background one. Because we have examples, I'm still so steady, you know. Also, I'm in my bedroom. Now, all the other, other girls, all the other, other guys, you know, step up, or you have a So, you need to watch all those things and mark them. And you need to be in the manasa, no. But in the near future. The future is what we are all looking at. Aren't we looking at that? Yes. We are all looking at that. But because our other father created them in a different world, we'll get to that one. Yay! Well, who do we need? Sister, brother, who do we say again? Amen, my bed. Or my sweet lady here is charity. Hmm? Even if you pay my hostel fee, it doesn't mean I should marry at the end of the day. Sweetie, I'm a wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let our minds be open with our campus relationship and know that we don't put our body, soul, and mind into it. Otherwise, every year, every year. we have those who are also married who are here. Guy, if I want to move a ring, you will be busy. What do you want to share this time? What happened? Wait now. Wait now. Eh? Wait now. Uh, over the skin arrangement. It's a skin arrangement. Let me tell you, the arrangement is easy. And then some of them will forget. That the wife at home is contributing to his education. And after school, I saw those students in the Charlie, are you still waiting? Charlie, you still waiting? You, you still waiting? <laughs> eh? You still waiting? But when you know yourself and you are crystal to each other, you know when that fire is coming. You know when that black sword is coming. Mm -hmm. But always be that bad of your mind. That's bear man one. And now I'm all school. No. Then we'll say, hey, lady, open the moon. Or yes, I'll pass up a cell. Oh, baby, the same way you're better scrap Oh. You guys, you the dog. Why you the dog? You know the dog. It's like a dog. Yeah. <laughs> and you understand. So it is good and bad. But when you know your source, you see, there are others that come to school. You know, they hear this person is coming from a rich background. Others who they pretend to be that they're not. They are making what they are saying. I think if they are making what they are saying, they are making what they are saying. They are making what they are Yes, it's kind of a power 
be aware of certain things which you know but because the sweet words get into your mind there are times you even forget that you have to eat oh yes they get into you so much so that you forgot to say and then go and make a beer and then yeah. you forget so many things please remember that campus relationship is open you need not to be a father a mother a husband or a wife the ultimate is you are here to learn the jealousy is killing people they always come back and cry I'm going to say I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And then boy, he's so lonely. And then here, he's so over here, another man. Or call lawyer, or call doctor, or call presenter. Go on, get me sure. I'm going to say. Shall we give it up to him? Shall we? Thank you very much. Yes, yes, that's it. That's it, sir. Welcome, my dear. That's what we're very happy. Thank you very much. If you have any questions for them, you keep them. If you have any questions or any clarification, you put them down. When it's time, you'll be called to do that. Want to go on to the next presenter? I want to call on my own mother, Mrs. Mary Akumi. Companionship, or it can be tolerated. 
and then you can terminate. So there are varieties. Friendships, that is mutual liking, trust, respect. We have brotherhood, people belonging to the same brotherhood, people belonging to the same church. We are soulmates, we are special partners. And this one, they may not necessarily be permanent. Then we have the platonic love. Have you heard of that? Platonic. It is an affectionate relationship into which the sexual element does not exist. Healthy and 
most of them.
shakes his head and walks out of the house to the car park where his car is parked. And the moment he comes out of the house, walking towards his car, here is the whole family. The father, the mother, the siblings, and they begin to come for him. And they say, the father says, congratulations. This was our test for you. We wanted to see what kind of son in a, what kind of a husband you will be to our daughter. And congratulations, you have passed. And they were expecting a guy to be jumping for joy, but he stands there with a shock on his face. And he keeps on saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they couldn't get him to stop saying thank you. Because you see, what the family didn't know is that it was his friend with him who always taught him that always keep your condoms in your car.
be it 20, be it whatever. That is the difference between your age and my age, because I'm 58. And then the significance of what is going to happen to you today. I am going to add to you, to your age, that number of years of experience and insight to your age, to your experience, and you still be a young person. So that you don't have to live those many years to learn the sense that I have learned now. You understand me? You can be young and still be sensible and wise. Because the tragedy of being young is that you are so wise in your own eyes, but in a few years' time, you will confess that you are a genius. <laughs> As I'm sure some of you have already begun to confess about your years in DSS and SSS. You look back and say, Tell me, we fool Papa. But if you do not have wisdom pumped into you, if you don't have the right mentors, if you do not have the right voices speaking to you, if you do not have wisdom and maturity speaking to you, I tell you, your life will be wasted. It will only be when you are old that you will be like, oh my goodness, what did I do with my life? And you will be asking, why did nobody tell me? You know, Sometimes people of my age don't talk to people like you because we think you don't want to learn. So if you want to learn this evening, keep quiet and listen. Because you will not meet me every day. And you will not meet anybody like me in a long time. Let me begin by setting a stage for you. Imagine us standing by the roadside. And we see five people walking in a fire. You know, they're walking one after the other in a fire. There is a pole in the middle of the street. First person gets into it and falls into it. What will we do? We'll all go, oh, sorry. Oh. And then we would insult whoever does the hole alive. And we'll go like, Nonsense is this in Ghana. Eh? How can you take a boat and not cover it? Eh? Oh, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. And we we'll maybe go and help them to get up. To get up there. Oh. Are you with me? Yes. Second person. So the first person go into the hole. He too gets there and into the hole he goes. What will we do? This time, you and I are going to be confused. We look at each other and say, ah, where am I now? Is there something wrong? Ah. Anna, is he blind? Ah. But the whole, they shouldn't have. Why should they use the whole thing? Third person. Same route. Get them right into the hole. In the goes. This time, they won't be sympathetic. There will be confusion on our part. You know what we do? Quasia. Quasia, where are you at? Don't you see? Didn't you see? If you didn't see that there was a hole there, the people would be here before you. When they fell into the you see? By some other. By the time the fourth person gets there and goes into the hole, we are ready to beat all of them. Am I? Because. We wouldn't know how to describe them anymore because even if we use the word fools for them, it will not be enough. <laughs> it has to be worse than fools. Are you with me? Yes. You guys agree with the analysis? Yes. All right, let's take it further. So, how do you explain a nation in which every generation makes the mistake of the generation ahead of them when they know the consequences of the mistakes that people made? What, how, do you, how do you describe them? In your homes, in your neighborhood, in your schools, you have seen people make certain mistakes. They've made certain choices and it has resulted in certain consequences. And yet, you two are walking the same way. 
and blissfully ignorant of the fact that you face the consequences. You think life is crazy. That's the story of Ghana. That's the story of Africa. That's the story of young people like you. The mistakes of the generations ahead of you. You are repeating them. Gleefully. Totally ignorant of the consequences facing you. So, today, I did not come to speak to every one of you because some of you have decided that whether we like it or not, after your life, you will mess it. No, let's, hello. Now, please, let's, enjoy it, enjoy it, There are people who don't care, they won't mess up their lives, they are determined to not mess up their lives, and there's nothing anybody can do, they will mess up their lives. They are there, don't copy them. But if you are here and you want something better for your life, then listen. Because then I came for you. There are people who walk through this college so that people will say, Me too, I went to college soon. <laughs> That's all they want. If you copy a person with that of priority in his life, you will be in trouble. But maybe you are here and you are the first person to go to university. Maybe you are here and the hopes of the whole family is resting on you. You can't live like somebody who even when he fails his exams will be leaving and taking to go abroad. You, nobody in your family has even seen for to come before. <laughs> so you know that we, don't, we are not at the same level. We are, the same, we are not at the same level. Some people can fool. They will be redeemed. Some of us, we need to redeem other people for their mistakes. So we are not the same. So you are sitting here and you are reacting in the same way. You are just a mob. Mob have a way of reacting to things. But please stay out of the mob. Remove yourself and be an individual. Don't copy the reactions of the people around you. Because some of the people around you, the way they are reacting is because what I'm saying annoys them. Because I am stopping them from messing their lives and they are determined. <laughs> ever work or not, no ever work. Ask my life, I will mess it up. And it means they have a right to mess it up. But if you are not here to mess up the life, then listen to me and listen to me. The first thing you need to remember is that this world is not a fiscal world. It's not only a fiscal world, that is the more correct statement. Because you see the fiscal things. We are in a fiscal building. The person sitting by you, you can see him physically. The chair you are sitting on, you can see physical. The buildings around you, the trees around you. So, in a sense, the foolish person sees this world and only sees what his eye can see, and what his hands can touch, and what his nose can smell, and what his ears can hear. That is a foolish person. That is the definition of a foolish person. He lives in this world, not realizing the true nature of this world. But I'm telling you, this world is not just a physical world. I told a story on Joy FM. Let me share it here again for those, the benefit of those who did not go, who did not listen. This was something that happened at Collegon. The young man was in the UK, the only one in his family to go abroad, working in London. Returns home from work one day to find his illiterate KK selling mother sitting in his hall. This is a story that was reported in, in Weekly Spectator, front page. So he enters and says, Hey, mama, here too. What are you here? And her mother says, Shh. I don't have time to waste. I don't have time to waste. So listen and listen real quick. No, no, no. How did you get how did you come here? How did you even know where to find me? He said, son, I said, shut up and listen. This night, at midnight, three flies with 
enter your flight at midnight. He said, no, flies in London at midnight. He said, sir, I said, shut up and listen. They will enter and they will be moving in a fire, one after the other. Leave the first one, the leader. Kill the two following it. <laughs> the boy, the boy was full of questions. Why don't you ask another question? No, 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 no. This is not a time to ask questions. I'm going. He said, Papa, how are you going, going to go? Wait, wait let me see you. Say, you, you don't understand. Don't see me off. I know how to go. So the mother walks out of the door. And the guy, by the time the guy got there and opened the door, the mother was nowhere she found. At midnight. Now, listen, if you were the one who had been told this, would you be able to see? Oh. At midnight. At midnight. He was sitting in the door. He doesn't know where the flies came from. Three flies moving in a fire. And as he had been instructed, he killed the last two and leaves the leader. And the following day, he bought a plane, he seeks permission from his office, bought it, the next available flight, and flies to Dan. Because he was too confused to focus on his way. By the time he arrived, two of his aunties were there. Hmm. One of my adopted sons works with Baptist. His mother, they come from the Pau Mountain and the Ebrahe Mountains. His mother made sure, he was the only son of the mother, the mother made sure he never visited the hometown until the woman died. Now he had to go home. After the burial, the family sat him down. Two of the aunties came to him and said, You, why is that you don't come? Why? You think we'll chew you? <laughs> and he, of course, it was too direct for him to say yes. But she said, Oh, no, 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 no. It's not that I'll be busy. I'll be very, very busy. Yeah, but I'll buy it. Your mother told you that you can't be to you in a place. Then one of them said, follow me. Took him to the room and said, look under the bed. There's a box there, pulled it out. So look under the bed, there was a pot. So he brings the pot out. And the woman says, the woman lifts, there was a cloth covering the mouth. Lays the cloth and says, look into it. He looks into the pot. And here was the video of his sitting room in Accra in real time. <laughs> this was not a picture of a sitting room. It was a sitting room in real time video. So he could see people going and enter the, men, the, the sitting room and things like that. In real time. And then, and then the auntie looks at him and says, you know, we don't have to find you, we want to find you. <laughs> but because of your mother, we have decided that you will spare you. So, a year from here, come. Don't bring me down. He left Ghana by, by ship. 
He came from Dorman Hikro to make the dent. He had never seen the sea before until that day. Now, those of you who were born along the beaches, you don't know how overwhelming the sea is for those of us born in the Hidamas. <laughs> you take the sea for granted. Those of us who were born in the Hidamas, the first time you see the sea, it's a frightening thing. So as he was getting into the ship, walking on the gangway, he looks at the sea and, and he gets this. That's the sheer expanse of the sea. Frightens him to the point of him making and getting dizzy. So he slips. And in an effort to steady himself, one of his shoes goes off his feet and falls into the water. <laughs> but there were people around because he was not the only one on the ground. So they hold him. They steady him. And then they tell him that, look, forget about the shoe. Go. So he goes. Goes in there and he, but he kept that single, that one, one shoe for all his time. It was, it was such, such a significant thing that he could not throw the shoe away. 28 years later, he gives up living in Germany because Germany wasn't helping him. He comes down. He comes down penniless. So he had to go back to the village to try and see, to get a place to live and try to see whether he can begin his life all over again from that base. The family house is deserted. He's left with just the grandmother. So the rooms were there. They gave him a room, but one day he said he needed another room. So the grandmother said, well, you could clean some of them. Because you see, in the villages, what happens is that people leave the village, but they leave their things there. So the rooms are empty. But people's properties are there. They are, they are dresses and some of their things are there. So it's about if you can clear one of the rooms, you can have it. The grandmother has gone to the farm. He was in the middle of clearing it, the, the room. When he came upon a bag, a box, he opened the box and here was the shoe that fell into the box. He rushed into his house, into his room. And bring the pen that he has saved and compare it was the exact truth. He could not wait for the grandmother to come back. He was shaking. So he picked the two shoes and ran into the farm where the mother, the grandmother was. Got there and said, Grandma, what is this? <laughs> and the grandma. Those of you making interjections, please stop it. You are doing distracting attention. If you are one of those people who have made up your mind, you want to mess up your life. <laughs> the people here, the people here want to take their life seriously, so please, please do that. Otherwise, keep quiet and listen. He asked the grandma, Grandma, what is this? And he said, The grandma looks at him and says, What the world? He said, What do you mean, my I said, eh, hey, hey, Nana, that will give us thank you, God. Because the God who is following you is faith. Said, when you were leaving Ghana, we were sent to throw you and drown you in the sea. So, you were saved. Just, my grandson, don't make any noise about it. Just go on with your life. <laughs> you know, I did not come here to argue with you to decide whether you believe that I'm telling what I'm saying is realistic or not, whether it's scientific or not scientific. I'm 58 years old. I know what I've seen. I have deliberately stayed away from my own personal stories. Because sometimes when you tell those stories, people think that you are out of writing from your mind. But I'm giving you stories you can verify. There was a point in my life when the youngest of my friends was 68 years old. He was the youngest of my friends. 68. <laughs> Oh, 
all my friends, all my friends were far older than I was. And what I did was that I made myself the servant. I served them. I served them any way I could. I want to have point. You want to send me, I'll go. If you are going anywhere and they let you know and I, I, can, I can squeeze it into my shadow, I say, well, I'll come and pick you. And I'll drive them there and back. And while they will talk to me, one of them told me this story, the story I'm going to share with you. Is that when he finished school? He was posted to a town beyond, away from where he, he was raised. He didn't know anybody in the town. And when he got there, he said there was a woman there who accepted him and a colleague of his and took them as her children. He said this woman made sure they didn't lack, they didn't lack anything. They wanted food, they were food. She made their life comfortable there. Then he said one day, he and his friend said, the friends told him that, look, this woman cried. You know, he likes you very much. So I think we should sleep with her before we go. <laughs> but you should be the one because he likes you better than me, so go. <laughs> so my friend goes to her one day. And says, Auntie, you've been so good to me and to us, me and my friend. But there's one thing you haven't done for us. So what? So well, you've never, you've not, um, Allow me, allow me to sleep with you. <laughs> the woman looks at him and says, you want to sleep with me? Uh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman says, go into my compound. Have you seen that? That little uh, shop there says, he said, pluck some of these leaves and bring. So he rushed out because the way the woman has reacted, he knew that. <laughs> Go talk. <laughs> so he rushes out and bring the leaves, fresh leaves. Fresh. He himself brought them from the tree. The woman was in the hall. Then the woman came from her bedroom. And so I put the bees there. He said, put the bees on the ground. So the guy put them on the ground. And he said, the woman went over the bees like that. And he said, before his own eyes, the leaves withered. They dried up. Just like that. His own eyes. No, he said, almost instantaneously, the moment the woman went over the leaves, the leaves dried up.
we fall far away with weight every day and we pay the price and because we don't even believe these things and know them, we keep making the same decisions and paying the same price. Some people fail exams and they don't even understand why they fail their exams because they work hard. Some people come out of this university with good grades and yet they go nowhere. Some people get good jobs from the university and yet none of theirs works. Some people's marriages do not work. They don't know why. Some people's children never go on in life. They don't even know why. Hey, let me tell you this. You think a white man is a fool that when you drop your son something, you call and tell them you drop something. Those of, those of you who have worked abroad, when people come up to work at the office, they don't really use people. They put in the number of hours work and they work as if they are fools. My, at one time, one of my bosses traveled to Amsterdam. He left. His luggage did not turn up when he went to the luggage tent. He complained to care. They told him, give us 24 hours, we'll find it for you. And within 24 hours, he said, give us your hotel, we'll bring it to you. Then they gave him some money to buy clothes in case he needed it. 24 hours later, there was a knock at his door. He opened it here with the official of the airline. They brought it and said, is this your bag? He said, yes. It looks like it. So please open it and confirm that everything is in it. He opened it. He said, have you checked it? Everything is okay. in it. Sorry to have caused you convenience. Um, have a good day. And they walked away. Ghana Airways. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you are holding your back and crying out What take it from you? The point I'm telling you is that because we are not educated about spiritual realities, we do things and it damns us and we don't care. There's a generation that's called the white person spiritual reality. Those of you who know this, you know about the dark ages and what happened after the dark ages. There are things that are happening during the dark ages that are not written in history books. But there's a reason why they were the dark ages, and there was a reason why the dark ages also different. So there are a lot of things that the modern generation of the white person doesn't even know. He thinks it's part of their tradition and their culture, but a generation lends them. In Ghana, no one has taught us those truths. So before we come to Kwanas, we think they're clever. We think they're clever. You know, in Ghana, Ghana is one of the countries where when a man goes to bed with a woman, he goes and grabs and says, Oh, I'm finished up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when a man has sex with a woman, who finishes who? <laughs> if you know what happens in a spiritual frame when you do that, you will run away next time a woman comes and says, Charlie, you want some free this thing? You know, I hear in Zambia, when they qualify for the finals, the prostitutes offered free sex. And I hear there was a long queue. <laughs> and I hear there was one case where a guy was beating because he spent too long in this <laughs> You know, it is, it is only a foolish and a foolish and naive young man. Who said that the girl gave the scholarship? She brought herself and he finished her. Without knowing that you were finished. <laughs> you were finished. Big time. I'll give you a test. Go and look at your neighbor. From your shop. Look at the lives of all the men who were known as big time womanizers and tell me where they are. What happened to them? How many of them have had the kind of life that at your age you still want to copy? They were promising young men. Today they are old men and they are begging. You know why? They were finished many times over and they didn't know. <laughs> so you are known, my cat's not 
that made drugs was somebody who is very good. And he keeps pushing marbles to you to talk. You should sit up and ask yourself why he's doing it. <laughs> but some of you, the moment the guy pushes, then help. Then he pushes another one, help. Then he pushes another one, help. All you hear is <laughs> All right, my time. I don't want to mess the program up. My, my time is up. Listen, listen. Let me, let me run up. All I think is to do for you today is the issue of campus for my brother to get into it or not. Is not the issue. The issue is how much you value your life and your destiny and your future. What choices are you making? And are you following? Are you following the crowd? <laughs> because everybody has a girlfriend, so we need to like get a girlfriend. Everybody has a boyfriend, so we need to like get a boyfriend. I can understand. Listen, there are some girls. I can understand that the society's pressure on women is higher than the pressure on men. If I'm at my age, I want to my own university person. But even at your age, as students. I'm sure that your parents have already started putting pressure on you. Why are you getting married? Why are you getting married? So that pressure can be serious. But that is only one side of the thing. There's another side of the relationship which we don't like talking about. It is this. If you leave, if you graduate with your mate who is a male and you're a woman, the chance of you getting a husband is, is, is harder. Because the Ghanaian men being what they are, they don't want women with too much qualification. <laughs> because even women without qualification, brown, stay with them is a problem. So, but that is not even the thing. If a Ghanaian man goes to marry a DSS person, then society will applaud. They say, why are you? Why are you? They really get just a DSS people, why are you? He's not very well. He's not very well to be able to pick her and to bring her up. But if you, a lady, graduate from the university and you were married even an SS graduate or even a police, everybody's going to say, ah, a paper. So, that. The reality, the reality is that there are challenges. But this is where this is where I want the ladies to listen to me. Listen to me. Nobody says you must get married by August. Nobody says you must get married by August. It is only because of the foolishness of God that we push our young ladies to go and get married. Listen. This is a society that does not approve of a girl chasing a boy. And then at the same age, we ask them and we put pressure on them to go and get married. As if husbands are sold in a store. How are they going to get a husband? If the men are not coming to her, why are they able to make a choice? What does she do? Me, I can go and chase. A woman can go and chase. So, why do we put pressure on the girls to get married by all But you see, the reason why you are at the university is that you then have the power to change society's paradigm. Don't let anyone force you to get married. Because your life is complete whether you are married or not married. And don't let anybody tell you that foolishness to say that or bad dear will so pass on this no. A bar is not a lady making machine. The era when we thought of women like that are over. And they know who are somewhere. They don't even know where they have to slept last night. They are the one where they need to you what are you waiting for? You hear you, you hear the wife. Next time somebody tells you go and get married, ask them. You don't need to have to get married. So show me the store where I can buy a house. <laughs> so that I can go and buy tea. Because I can go pay the 
When you say that, they will say boom one day, but say it to them once. Let them say boom one day, they will stop bothering you. Life is difficult for our ladies. Please, ladies, don't make it more difficult for yourself by putting pressure on yourself. If it doesn't come, it doesn't come. If the man of your dreams has not come, don't lower your standard. They will say, your standards are too high. Of course! You are looking for somebody who will become the father of your children. You want to lower the standard. When your children ask you, Mama, why did you marry that foolish? What would you say? <laughs> Please, don't become one of those women who have to apologize to their children for the kind of father they are giving them. You know, the man does his foolish things and they call the children, oh, go up, go up, and they say, oh, okay, okay. You are apologizing to your children for the foolish man you marry. If the man of your dreams is not coming, please. They will say, they will say biological clock. Forget biological clock. If you don't have children, adopt. You can have a total life without children. If you want to know why, I can say that. It's because I've been married for 29 years. I don't have biological children. But I will be, I will be surprised if there is anyone who has lived life more fully and has been more blessed than I have been. Every Monday and Thursday, a, a million people listen to me on radio. How many people can make that? <coughs> Relationships and marriages have been transformed because of the ministry and the blessings God has given to me. Theater has been revived in Ghana because of what He has given to me. So I don't have children, and so what? Sometimes, God is blessing in every area, but in one thing he's withheld. Which one will you focus on? The one thing he has withheld from you. All the many blessings he has blessed you. It's your choice. I have chosen to look at the many blessings he has given me. And you know something? I don't have a lot of children, but at least three children have been named after me. Because I am, I may be the only man in Ghana. Who is adopted by people as a father? People go and adopt children. There are people who have adopted as children. But generally, there are people who adopt me as a father. You think that is my person? Well, our time is up. I've messed up the time of the organizers, so I have to go back. Let me end with this. <laughs> may, God, may God bless every one of you. May He give you a wisdom beyond your age. May He guide your path so that you walk on the path that leads to prosperity and peace of mind. May your future be wonderful. May you be blessed so much that people will want to be blessed as you. And may you avoid the traps in life, the snares in life. So that your life will not suffer any setbacks. God bless you. In the name of the Father, I will stand and I will